Good evening and welcome. You are watching the news track. I am Rahul Kamu. Ever since the Vinesh Fogart disqualification story broke this morning, my stomach's been churning, my head has been heavy. You know, I've had this sinking feeling. I can't even begin to imagine what Vinesh Fogart has been going through. And at some level, Vinesh's ordeal and agony symbolizes what India has faced during the Paris Olympics. Five disciplines, our teams, individual competitors, or playing together, have ended up missing out on a medal by a whisker. You know, why is it that we've come so close and yet somehow faltered and tripped at that last podium finish? What's gone wrong for India's Olympic dream? Why could we not bring it together, land that one killer punch or the knockout blow? What lessons can we learn? How do we, as a collective, as a people, as a society, as a country, gather from here and regain our Olympian spirit. That's my top focus on the new structure. Vinesh Heartbreak Jones. But bigger questions explode. Full Josh, but few medals. but fourth place. What ails India's sports spirit? Is India's Olympics now Game of Thrones? There was a time when our athletes weren't even in contention. They were just happy to be at the Olympics and participating. Now we are very much in contention. A few of our athletes win and one of them, uh, Manu Bakar, will be with me on the news track tonight. But many of them, vast majority of them, slip out. That one last, almost seemingly intangible uh, moment where it just slips out of their hand. Why? 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 If it happens once, I understand. If it happens twice, something in the end just doesn't come together as it should. What is that? I don't know. I'm not a professional athlete. I'll try and speak to some people who are. Today, India is devastated. But if you're feeling sad and have that sinking feeling, imagine her, Vinesh Fogart. Just a hundred grams. Just a hundred grams. Less than what an iPhone weighs. Less than what a bar of Dettol soap weighs. That's what ended her golden run at the Olympics. The weight of this loss the weight of this agony hangs heavy on our country tonight. Vinesh Fogart was on her way to creating history at the Paris Olympics. But just hours later, a dream was shattered as she was disqualified from the gold medal bout. The wrestler had defeated reigning Olympic 50 kg champion Yui Susaki on her road to the final. In the semi-final, she had outclassed Cuba's used Lenis Guzman 5-0 to assure at least a silver. However, on the morning of the final, Vinesh missed the weight cut by a little over a hundred grams that led to her disqualification. The 29-year-old's campaign came to a morale-shattering halt as she was eliminated ahead of the final. Vinesh and her support staff tried everything, including extreme measures like cutting her hair and attempting to draw out blood, but all their efforts went to no avail. In the morning, we found that despite all of her efforts, her weight was 100 grams over her 50 kilogram weight category and hence she was disqualified. We had tried all possible drastic measures throughout the night, including cutting off her hair, uh, shortening her clothes. And despite all of this, we could not make that 50 kg weight category. 
The rules are very clear when it comes to such situations. If an athlete does not attend or fails the way in, he or she will be eliminated from the competition and rank last without a ranking. India have lost the protest and the wrestling federation chief has vowed to take up the matter with the highest authorities. उम्मीद पे तो हम टिके हैं और अभी हम लड़ रहे हैं मैं तो अंतिम दम तक प्रयास करूंगा कि ये मेडल हम किसी भी तरह से मुझे फाइट का मौका मिल जाए और मेडल हिंदुस्तान की झोली में डालवा सकूं द ओलंपिक्स व्हिच इज द हाईलाइट ऑफ एन एथलीट्स करियर हैज नेवर लेफ्ट हैप्पी मेमोरीज फॉर विनेश फोगाट इन पेरिस अ परफेक्ट रिडेम्पशन स्टोरी वाज जस्ट वन चैप्टर अवे बट इन अ श्योर एंटी क्लाइमैक्स Vinesh has been denied a place in history. Sports Bureau, India Today. India's stay at the Paris 2024 Olympics has been a series of what ifs for athletes like Lakshya Sen, Arjun Babuta, Dheeraj Bhama Devra, Ankita Bhagat, and even Manu Bhakar in her third event after battling their hearts out and coming so close to winning a medal in their events. The players ultimately missed out on a podium finish by a whisker. Here's a look at India's unfortunate tryst with fourth place. So near, yet so far. This has pretty much summed up India's Olympic journey. With Vinesh Fogart's heartbreaking disqualification, India's hopes of upping a medal tally has come crashing down. And through the last one week in Paris, it has been a story of almosts. Almost qualifying, almost winning or almost sealing a medal. We have got a score of our champions finishing fourth, just short of a medal win and sometimes by less than a second. Lakshya Sen, a bright badminton star, looked all set to seal the deal with one stellar performance after another. But after losing the semi-final clash, choked in his bronze medal encounter to Lee Zijia of Malaysia, Lakshya's disappointing performance combined with zero medals from a badminton contingent even prompted the strong word reality check from coach Prakash Padukone. while we are happy with his performance um i'm a little disappointed that uh, you know we couldn't get even one medal from badminton you know, i have nothing against i don't think anybody could have done anything more than you know what the government has done the sports ministry sai tops and all the ogq and so i think it's high time some you know, the players also need to take some responsibility but it is not just laksh a bronze girl manu bhakar who has done india so proud by bagging two medals had a chance of sealing a hat trick but in a core area of 25 meter pistol shooting where she was in the top 3 for much of her qualifiers she lost out dropping to fourth after missing two targets it has been a great great uh, show for me uh, i have been shooting really well these past i think 5 6 days have been amazing i um, shot really well in all the qualifications then the final rounds were also great uh, so two bronzes and one fourth position so i think i'm uh, happy for now but need to work even harder in the future another shooter arjun babuta came close to a podium finish in the men's 10 meter air rifle final but again finished fourth and then there was archery our best performance so far in the sport in olympics has been by dheeraj bhuma devra and ankita bhakat and by best we mean fourth place again if india had sealed these wins this olympics would have been our best so far because it would have meant at least five more medals in our tally bureau report india today There was a time when Indian athletes were simply not world quality or podium worthy to the extent that they'd be able to actually realistically think that they'd win at the Olympics. Make no mistake ladies and gentlemen this time 
more than a dozen of our athletes had a very real chance of actually winning and I'm only talking about those events which have already happened. Many of them came very close as you saw in that report but faltered at that last step where the difference is so narrow that it's almost impossible for a lay person to tell the gap between the person who ended up at the podium and the athlete who missed out. And remember, coming fourth is really just the worst thing. If you didn't reach the finals or you couldn't make the qualifications, that's one thing. But if you come so close and then you, know, then you don't end up winning, how do you live with that? Now, the question is, what are the lessons we can learn? How do we ensure that we can do better next time? And why did things not come together? That just last finish, why did it not happen? Uh, to talk about this, I'm joined on this broadcast by multiple guests and we'll try and get their perspective. I want to introduce uh, Manisha Malhotra, Head of uh, Sports uh, sports Excellence and Scouting at JSW Sports. We've got Adil Sumariwala, President of the Athletics Federation of India. Jakpeer Singh is a very well-known hockey player, Arjuna Award recipient. Krishna Punia joins us, discuss through our track and field star athlete, Padma Shri and Arjuna Awardee winner. Uh, we've got Pradeep Magazine, one of India's best-known sports journalists. Joydeep Karmaka is a sharpshooter. So thank you to all our guests for joining us. I want to go across to Manisha first because you're at the Paris venue. You saw the wrestling. And I want to spend just a moment by you know talking about whether there was anything at all more that could be done. Because as people relive this agony throughout the day, they just wonder... Could we have done anything more? Where did this go wrong? Could anything have been done differently which ensured that one detall bar, that's all the gap that there was, 100 grams between being able to fight in the finals tonight and not be able to do it. Why couldn't we just bring it together magically? You know, why did we just lose out at that last moment? Well, I mean, the Olympics, the, the margins between the gold medal and every other, not just every other medal, but the rest is sometimes razor thin. And here we see that it's, I don't think we're at the time right now where everybody's emotional to discuss the would have, could have, should have. Um, I think that this is the time to support the athlete. I think, you know, I mean, imagine how devastated we are. So you can't even imagine what she's going through. And I don't think that we need to kind of, you know, sit here and, and, point fingers at this moment. I think the time right now is to rally behind our athletes who are still competing. We still have a good bunch of athletes coming up. And I think it's important that we we kind of spin a positive um, ca like campaign to, to get these guys through the thing. And then on the 12th, we can really sit down and see where things went wrong and th see what we did right or wrong. I mean, there's a lot that's gone right. She's made the 50 kilograms the day before. So uh, sometimes your body just does not report, respond to weight cuts as, as needed. And, and that's the unfortunate part of what has happened. And, and yeah, I mean, it's really difficult for anybody to kind of express the disappointment that we all have right now. Adil Sumariwala, you're part of the, you know, the Indian official delegation. There are so many uh, Indian officials, such a big support staff. There's a time when there was uh, little government backing, no corporate support. Now there's a lot of government backing, a lot of corporate support. The athletes have been given everything. And from what we can gather, the international coaches, big support staff, medics. And yet, you know, that just 100 grams, I mean, how did they get their calculations wrong? Why couldn't they fix this? So first of all, let me correct you. I'm not part of the Indian delegation. I am there on my own as the vice president of world athletics and a member of the jury of a jury of world athletics so i've got nothing to do with the official contingent uh, as far as it goes number 1 number 2 yes yes you need you need support staff for example neeraj himself has three support staff uh, vinish herself had personal three or four support staff so yes, you need that support staff. You need a physio, you need a masseur, you need a dietitian, you need you need a doctor, you need the support staff. So just to blame anybody and everybody, you have to first understand how the system works. This is all this talk is without trying to understand the system. You get, she got weighed in. She was exactly the weight that she had to be, 50 kilos. 
then you're allowed to eat or drink or whatever. Normally, most competitions get over on the first day. There is no second day. Now you put on weight between the time you got weighed in on the first day and you end. And imagine, she did three fantastic bouts. She beat the Japanese who had 82 wins in a row, unbeaten. She had three. She had to eat. She had to get hydrated. She had to drink water. So her body weight naturally went up. Now the challenge is, and which normally doesn't happen in other international competitions, it happens mostly in the Olympics, is that you have to reduce your weight between the evening of your last bout and your next bout in the morning. So they did whatever they could. They had a whole team of, including her own private uh, uh, personal coaches, of uh, personal staff of four, her personal nutritionist, the team nutritionist, the team doctors. They did everything from a sauna to, to a treadmill to running half the night. The whole team stayed up with her. And... and uh, they tried their best. And 100, uh, uh, I don't understand just keeping on showing bananas and apples and whatever to say, 100 grams. Usain Bolt broke the start by five thousandths of a second and he was put out He could, in the finals, the world championships. So there is a rule. If you, if you don't fall within that rule, you go out. Now, I don't know what is the point of showing an apple and a banana. You, If you are overweight, you're overweight. Uh, uh, Manu Bhakar lost by something thinner than your hair. The distance between the first, uh, the silver and the bronze was less than your hair. Now, it was less than your hair. Now, that is the rule. Now, if you lose, you lose. You win, you win. So, I think... I think we need to get a larger perspective and a handle on us. No, what is the larger what, perspective, what, Adil Sumarewala? Listen, at the highest level. No, Adil Sumarewala, make no mistake. Not for a second are we blaming the athletes. Uh, they've played their heart out. If you join all these dots and just look at the sheer number of athletes who've come fifth, the question I'm trying to ask, which I think is a very relevant question to ask, and I think many would agree, is that why is it that so often we missed out by just that fraction of the hair that you're talking about? Is it just happenstance, coincidence? Because earlier, we weren't even in the medal fray. Now we are. You know, so many of our athletes so can close I, to the podium and just missing out. That's the question. It's a, I, I, I realize you're emotional, is, but that's a very important question to ask, sir. I am answering the question. It's very simple. At one time, we had nobody qualifying into the finals. Today, we have these many people not only qualifying in the final, but are in the top six. Now, there is a time of progression. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like a switch you can put on and off. So, please understand that there is a, a progression time. And you can't, you can't do anything to that time. So, we are trying our best, whether it's the government, it's the federation, it's the Mission Olympic Cell, it's the top scheme. All of us, whether it's private sponsors, we are all working together to ensure that we shorten this time and the progression moves faster. But there is no magic wand. Please understand. Sure, you're saying there's no magic point. You're saying it's a process. Let's take uh, hockey, for example. Jagbir Singh, you know, this team started out a little underwhelmingly in the first few league matches. Yesterday against Germany in the semi-finals, I thought they played, and I'm sure everybody who's watching would agree, they played outstandingly well. They were arguably the better team on the field. And yet somehow, as is often the case, not just with hockey, but with Indian sport, they missed out. Just that last killer punch, which could have been delivered, wasn't delivered. Now, you've got Adil uh, Sumariwala saying that it's a progression, it's a journey. How do you look at this? The team was playing better, they were more flamboyant, they had more skill, they seemed like they were set to win, and yet suddenly, like the case with Finnish, uh, they didn't win. No, it's, it's, it's not just about winning, it's about how you fight for the game, and this is what hockey has done. Let's not forget 2008 Olympics, we did, even didn't qualify. Sure. That was the time when the government was proposing that hockey should be out of the priority sports because everybody had been talking about hockey not being there anymore. Amara time khatam ho gaya and hockey can never make a comeback. But then there was support coming in. Then started, they realized that it's not just about one tournament, it's a continuing process which they have to follow. And honestly, 
sports in India have actually started on a scientific note from 2010 Commonwealth Games preparations in India. That's the time when we took sports very seriously. That's the time when we started providing the athletes with international top quality coaches. We heard for the first time what biomechanics is all about, what scientific training is all about. We always thought trainer is the only one who can make us running around, who can make us help get fitter. But there are so many other factors involved which later hockey realized. And 2012, we finished at the bottom of the table. Everybody said no chance for hockey to come back. And now this is the second consecutive time we are into the semi-finals. I would say it was very close and this was the best match Indian hockey played against Germany. That's also in the semi-finals. There are three European teams already qualified in the semi-final. There is always two European teams playing in the semi-finals. Australia always there, but this is the first time India has challenged them. So I would take half glass full and not empty. No, I, I, you know, as a huge fan of all Indian athletics and especially hockey and I care for it much more than I do for cricket I am delighted with the way that they fought I'm trying to understand that little glass empty which is still there the half full I love everyone loves I'm seeing the glass that's half empty how do we fill that I'll tell you how what we get as youngsters into coaching or scientific support which we all talk about is at a later stage when you join the national training camps it is when we talk about TOFs, it is when we talk about all the facilities being given to the national uh, probables, expecting immediate medals. Let's start from the grassroots level. Let's give them the top quality coaches. Let's give them the quality which is required to bring quality results. We always want shortcuts. It doesn't happen. It can never happen in a sport. I remember Belgium in 2009. They stood no way. They had no chance even for qualifying for the Olympics. And now look at them. They are so consistent in their performance. They've been challenging every top teams. They, they won the World Cup. They won the Olympic Games. And on the other side, if you look at Argentina, 2016 Olympic gold medalist, they are not able to follow that. But luckily, now it's time that India has to realize that sports has to be a way of life. It cannot be brought in temporarily just before the major tournaments. The government is doing extremely well. The federations are doing what best they can with the limited funds available. There are not many sponsors coming in other sports. Hockey is very fortunate that we have Odisha State sponsoring them for a long period. That confidence has to come in the state federations. It has to come in the district federations. Also, the financial sport has to come at the national level. Let's forget about the juniors, sub-juniors and the grassroots where there is no money, there is no support. Teams are struggling. I would say it's high time. A calendar program has to start from the grassroots, from the pre-adolescent stage. That's where... The okay, you're saying start. start supporting them much earlier, give them international coaches and support from a younger age than they do at this moment. Joydeep Karmakar, let's take shooting. Sure, Manu Bhakar uh, won two bronzes. I mean, she herself was in line for silver uh, on, on at least two of her events, missed out in the 25-meter pistol. A lot of other athletes like Arjun Butata seem set, heading towards silver, missed out just by that narrowest fraction. Is this just bad luck? Uh, why couldn't we land that one final blow? Uh, even in skeet, you know, just that one odd shot that didn't go right was the difference between winning the bronze and losing the bronze. Why are we, according to you, coming so close and not landing that last punch? Absolutely. I, I think you have uh, pointed out very correctly. But then I have a different perspective to this uh, part of coming forth. Uh, I myself was fourth in London Olympics uh, back back in 2012. I was the first shooter to get uh, in a fourth position. Um, I, of course, I was I was greeted um, with much much uh, acceptance and and a lot of lot of encouragement uh, because I was the first one to be in the fourth place. But now again, like in 2024, we have seen three. Uh, shooters like four shooters, one in mixed team, they have they have uh, come in the fourth place and missing missing the bronze medal by whiskers. But now things are changing. I, I would uh, very much uh, agree with uh, Adil here because because this is a process which was going on for a while. Uh, in our time, there was no process. We didn't have proper coaches, but we had to fought, uh, fight a lot of obstacles to like you know uh, to get there. Uh, to just to get into the finals. I was the first finalist ever in Indian shooting team in a 50 meter to get there. But this is nothing to boast about because 
yeah, th those were difficult times. Now we want more results. Of course, results are coming, but uh, it, it is a process. It will not happen overnight. But I'm happy to say and happy to share that uh, apart from the three medals, if we don't go by the medal count only, uh, the average ranking of each event, apart from some uh, shotgun events in Indian shooting team, has risen considerably where we would finish uh, in the past Olympics in 32nd, 42nd, uh, 28th position. Now people are uh, getting there in 12th position, 10th position, missing the final. Uh, Sarab Jodh Singh by, by, uh, by in, in a tense, in the same score. So these are the things which are happening. No, the I, I realize that. I think everybody watching realizes that we've made progress, realizes that it's a process. I'm trying to understand from you, Jayadeep Karmakar, what can be done between now and Los Angeles to try and plug that hair, hair length of a gap that still exists? Yeah, I would agree there. It's a bit of luck in sports. Everybody would agree, but then we don't depend on luck. We do our best and then like rest if in, uh, individual sports like shooting, you cannot do much more than what you can do because, you know, this is a very individual sport. Others shoot well, you can't do anything about it. But of course, going to LA, we'll look forward to it. And I think the, the usual process right now, which is going on, the momentum we have had, uh, in, the, in the last uh, few years. Of course, again, we have to remember 12 years, we are not without a single medal after 2012. But then things were getting better. Things were getting better. Now, eventually, in the culmination point 2024, we have the most number of medals coming from the shooting team. But what I believe is we don't need to change a lot here. We don't need to uh, create a create a like you know dramatic change here in the system to to make it like you know six medals or seven medals in LA. So I think it will gradually happen. The belief system has to be there because now when you don't have a medal, you have a drought of twelve years. The belief system gets a lot of bashing, and then I think from now uh, all the shooters, the next generation is also looking up. And then they can see that, okay, three medals, fine. Manu Bhakar is a hero. Okay, great. But then there are shooters who are going into the finals, missing out on the medals also. Now, I will be the one uh, to, to, to win that medal for India. I think that dream that is ignited. No, no, the dream important. was ignited earlier. It's just that it's not getting fulfilled at the culmination of that. Uh, Nikhil Nas joins us. He's reporting for us from Paris. Nikhil, you know, this was supposed to be India's day. Uh, the hockey team missed out after playing well. Vinesh forgot in a manner that wasn't even conceivable. I mean, just like complete shock. You've been in Paris. Capture the emotion of the day of the Indian contingent, the athletes, the officials, everyone. And now I know that we filed some kind of a complaint with the IOA. Can anything at all still happen? I mean, is there any miracle still possible or it's uh, game over for Vinesh forgot? Uh, it, it's game over. Uh, just to put it in one word, uh, Rahul, I ended up speaking to the UWW chief uh, who heads the International Federation, the United World Wrestling Federation. Uh, he mentioned to me in that exclusive interview that it's unfortunate, all right, but there's nothing that can be done. Two things that really he points out. One, that it is not a new rule. This has been there in play from 2013. So you're very well aware of it. The wrestlers are very well aware of this particular rule. Uh, that's one. And, uh, you know, uh, the other being, is there any sort of recourse that can you file an appeal and various things? And, and to that, he explained it very well. He said, if it is a case of, uh, let's say, uh, ambiguity, if there is a case of uh, refereeing error or you're not happy with some decisions, that's something that you can appeal and then the Federation looks into it. This is a case of black and white. This is a case of just coming into the weight category that you've chosen to participate in and whether you are below that weight category or not. If you are, then you very well can participate. If you're not, you can't. You were talking about fine margins, uh, Raul, you know, that 100 grams. Uh, this very uh, Olympic Games, I went and saw the 100 meter final. The two finalists, 9.79 dead heat, and yet you have a winner between the gold and the silver. I'll give you a wrestling example. You had Sushil Kumar, our very own Sushil Kumar, uh, who's won two medals at the Olympic Games at the Asian Games level on the eve of his fight. When he, uh, the next day, on the day of his fight, I beg your pardon, when he weighed in, he was 40 grams overweight and he wasn't allowed to compete. And here you had an, an Olympic participant uh, or an Olympic medal winner participating in the Asian Games. So it's been a case of. Fine no, but margin. surely Venetia's team knew she like fought. First because in 55 kilograms, then in 53. If she's coming down to 50 weight is something they would have had 
topmost on their mind that when you're feeding her last evening, you kind of keep in mind that she has to be 50 kilograms in the morning. Uh, but you're also torn because you want her to win the semi-final. You want that she has enough nutrients to be able to do it. So it's really, really complex. But I'm saying that's why we have all these uh, support staff. That's their job. That's what they're supposed to do to take care of their ward. No, valid point, Rahul, but the story runs really deep and it had many layers. I mean, for you to understand why this is and for our viewers to understand why we are in a situation like that, you'd actually have to go a year or two, uh, you know, uh, back in history. That's simply because, remember, her natural weight is 57 kilograms. So, usually 57 kilograms and that is Antim, the one who fought today. Her natural weight is around 57. She fights in 53. Uh, and that's exactly what you do. Your natural weight, you drop in about 2-3 kilos and participate. In Vinish's case, she's actually dropping down close to 8-10 to 10 kilos to participate. And that was only done because Antim had gotten the quota for 53 kilos. And the Indian Wrestling Federation has a rule now that no, whoever wins the quota will go. Vinish only had two options, either to go to 57 kilograms where she'd have to fight much stronger wrestlers or fall down to 50, a category which she was participating in 10 years ago when her natural weight was around 53. That was a gamble she took. So the questions could be asked, was it a gamble worth taking at that time? Secondly, I agree with you, your point that you're making in terms of support staff. Last few months, she's been, you know, on the road. She's been participating and she's had trouble. She came very close to not even making the Olympic Games. Let me remind everyone that because when she participated in the Asian quota for to get a quota, Asian qualification to get a quota for these games, there also she barely made the cut. She barely made the cut cut by the narrowest, barest of margin. She participates, gets a quota. So you knew you were treading on very fine line. You knew it from the start. Uh, 2.7 kilos, I don't think she expected that that's the kind of weight that she would have gained. I, I'll tell you how, how there were they were signs this might have happened. I saw her compete in the semi-final. Once she won that bout, she goes through the mixed zone where she speaks to the media. She ran and she said, I don't want to speak because I have work to do. She knew she had to lose that 2.7 kilos that she had added on. Had it been close to 2 kilos or slightly less than that, that is something they could have managed. But if I tell you, Rahul, and that will take me another five minutes, I don't think you have time, but if I was to tell you the manner or the means that are employed by boxers and wrestlers to cut down that weight at the last moment, uh, that's another story in itself. Forget about eating, they don't even drink water leading up into that 24, 48 hours. They are competing, they can see water, they can see food, carbohydrates, they cut back two weeks in advance. On the two days before before about they don't even drink water because the only way they can lose weight because they've reached the optimum weight the only way they can lose weight is by not having water in their body it reached the stage with Vinish where if she wanted to cry she couldn't have tears coming out because there was no water left if she wanted to sweat there was no sweat left there was no water left in her body that's the extreme level that she had reached and unfortunately that's the life that most wrestlers and boxers have to live at the moment it's really really terrible uh, Krishna Punya you know you're a champion discus thrower Track and field still left. We've got uh, our champion Neera Chopra in the fray. He could lift a billion hearts. Uh, but your sense of what we've been discussing, you know, coming so near and yet missing out at that very last stage. Why do you think that's happening? How can we fix it? Uh, Rahul ji, uh, sabse pehle to main, uh... नीरज को शुभकामनाएं देती हूं और हमारे देश को जैसे विनेश से आशाए हैं वैसे नीरज से भी हैं और जो बात आपने कही कि हम यही सवाल है कि अगर उसका 100 ग्राम वेट कम नहीं हो रहा था तो उस सिचुएशन से हम कैसे बच सकते थे आ, क्या हमें सिल्वर मेडल के लिए कोई और ऑप्शन थे जो हम रख पाते तो यहां पर मुझे लगता है कि टीम मैनेजमेंट को काम करना चाहिए था सारे जतन करने के बाद भी 100 ग्राम बॉडी वेट कम नहीं हो रहा है तो भी मुझे लगता है कि कुछ ऑप्शंस होंगे हमारे पास जिसकी वजह से हम अगर पार्टिसिपेट ना करते और हमें सिल्वर मेडल मिलता क्या क्या इंडिकेट तो करें कि आप है बोलो कि आप इंजर्ड हो गए या कुछ क्योंकि वो तो फेयर नहीं होता ना अगर आप बोलो कि आप इंजर्ड हो गए आप नहीं खेल पाते तब शायद आपको मिल जाए बट दैट्स नॉट द राइट ओलंपिक थिंग टू डू नो नो चीटिंग का मतलब ये है कि अगर आप डोप डोप टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं आप या कोई और वजन वजह है दो दो बहुत सारी चीजें थी दूसरा जो मैं कह रही हूं उसका ऑप्शन ये था कि आ, अगर उस लड़की ने आ, तीन बाउट 50 केजी के में जीती है तो क्या वो हमारे पास एक आ, आ, 
प्रोटेस्ट करने के लिए हमारे पास ऑप्शन नहीं था कि हमें प्रोटेस्ट करना चाहिए अगर वो 50 के में कर रही है तो कम से कम हमें सिल्वर मेडल तो हमारे पास होना चाहिए बींग एथलीट में आ, ये बातें मैं कह रही हूँ हाँ ठीक है रूल है और इसी वजह से वो नहीं जा पाई पर कुछ तो ऐसा टीम मैनेजमेंट की तरफ से होना चाहिए था प्रोटेस्ट अच्छे से होना चाहिए था या कुछ उनको डिसीजन लेने चाहिए थे कि हमें क्या करना चाहिए और दूसरा मैं ये कहना चाहूंगी कि आ, कोई भी एथलीट जब पार्टिसिपेट कर रहा है तो उसे सिर्फ मेडल दिखता है बाकी चीजें मैनेज नहीं कर सकता है हो सकता है उसकी डाइट का कोई फर्क पड़ा हो हम वो सारा काम स्पोर्टिंग जो टीम है उसका रहता है तो जब भी कोई एथलीट इतने बड़े इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे जैसे बात की जा रही है कि उसका नॉर्मल वेट है फिफ्टी सेवन है और वो फिफ्टी के में पार्टिसिपेट कर रही है फिफ्टी सेवन में वो पार्टिसिपेट फिफ्टी में जब वो करती रही है तो फिफ्टी था लेकिन ये नहीं था कि वो सिर्फ एक महीने में ही 50 के में लड़ रही है वो इसके लिए भी डेढ़ दो साल से ट्राई कर रही है ना तो इसलिए मैं कह सकती हूँ कि उसे भी इस चीज का ध्यान था पर okay. लास्ट टाइम में जब कृष्णा पुण्य से ओलम्पिक्स वॉज द एनीथिंग एल्स दैट वी कुड हैव डन कंसीवेबल रजिस्टर प्रोटेस्ट इंश्योर दैट शी गेट्स द सिल्वर सम वे ऑर दी अदर well i think we couldn't have done anything because the rules are rules and as as nikhil also said uh, the wrestling federation president said they 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 are bound to follow the rules so i don't think we lack that effort not to try her uh, getting on onto the podium or or saying that okay give her silver she even if she's over it because she has won her medals or she had won her bouts legitimately she was below 50 kg or at 50 kg when she fought but leaving that aside i think we are forgetting one important question what's wrong with indian sports i'll tell you vinesh all that she went through if she had the courage the guts the temperament the technique to win india a gold medal she was struggling on the streets of india trying protesting that the federation president was sexually harassing the athletes what did we do nothing the wrestling federation of india bridge bhushan's brother or son they are there she despite against all odds she realized that she, she it was her dream to win a medal in olympics she cut down on her weight she changed her weight category as everyone says she was 56 57 fighting in 53 she went down to 50 because she couldn't get the qualification for uh, for her main uh, uh, weight category she did everything she reached that final salute to her and what is wrong with the indian sports is very obvious if you track vinish's Six months, last one year journey. That apart, why? See, our expectations have grown. We as a nation think that we can become China, but China and the gap between us and other top sporting nations is so huge. Despite that, if we look at the progression, as Adil is saying, and I agree with him, it's the first time today that every day you sit in front of TV expecting that maybe today we get a medal because somebody is in contention for that medal. That itself is tremendous progress, given the fact that we spent all our money, as Jagbi said, at the top level. No, once an athlete, we spot an athlete at the top level that he he or she might win medal for us, but that's not the way out. Only yes, do that. but you have to go to the grassroots from where you have sure. such a huge population okay. at the dividend of that population you have to invest there at the grassroots not at the top i i agree with what you're Alone. saying invest at I the mean, top I'm not saying that also that invest at the enough. grassroots and i think it's a journey as admirers and lovers of indian sport don't give up hope i think i guess i made that point that earlier we weren't even in the fray now we're discussing why aren't we winning what's the gap that uh, the gap which is the size of uh, hair strand of hair you know how do we plug that gap that's easier than not being in contention at all and hopefully it is a journey and hopefully we'll stay at it not be despondent and los angeles beckons frankly time when you know you were almost looking at not wanting to get back to the range uh, not wanting to look at your pistol after what happened at the tokyo olympics from there to now be the brightest spot uh, in the indian olympic contingent winning not one but two medals do you feel like you're living a dream what's been going through your 
heart, your head and your mind over the last few hours and days? So uh, Tokyo journey was not easy for me. It was rather the uh, one of the most difficult ones that I've had in my life. Uh, but Tokyo taught me uh, so many lessons that I carry forth from the, there till Paris and which helped me overcome all the problems and all the situations that occur in Tokyo. So uh, I would say that Tokyo made me stronger and Paris was where I was able to deliver what I learned from Tokyo. And um, <clears throat> I am really happy and really grateful that I could give India two medals in Paris 2024. And I will, um, I'm hoping that I'll keep continuing, uh, continue this and work even harder in the future and try to deliver better. How do you keep your cool and your control? Because I was sweating. I'm not even shooting. We're just watching you on television and just panicking. And in the midst of all of that, with your name being chanted, you're supposed to keep that pistol still. How do you do this? I think shooting is a beautiful sport, isn't it? Because uh, despite of so much of distraction, so many things going on in the um, backstages or in the, in the arenas, fields, you have to keep yourself calm and composed and really focus so that you can uh, you can perform better. And um, now I have learned to um, be happy and enjoy that phase because it's been a long time in my career that I've been through this pressury situations. Now I enjoy this uh, and I was indeed feeling very nervous. But again, I had trained for it for past so many years and now it was time that I keep calm and try my best to do as good as possible. Now, when you look back at these three events, you know, there were occasions uh, in the 10 meter uh, pistol, also in the 25 meter pistol where you, you, were, you were coming second. You know, it seemed like you had a real chance potentially of silver, potentially of, uh, you know, doing uh, much better in the end in the third uh, 25 meter pistol, you didn't win a medal, you just missed out. What's the difference? I mean, just as, uh, you know, as a wannabe sports person or somebody who just plays recreationally versus a real uh, sports person, what's the difference between, say, silver, gold and bronze from, from your lens, mentally and physically, since from the outside, it seems the gap is just like one point or one shot. So I would say that uh, Olympics is a kind of stage where the finest of the fine athletes come and uh, um, like Olympics is a kind of stage where or oh, everyone has been like either the world champion or is world number one or is like world number three, two, four, something like that and competing with them and trying to uh, win medal for the country is one of the most difficult things if not the difficult thing. So um, it was a, it's always a pleasure to um, represent my country at such a uh, honorable and prestigious stage. Uh, but I would say that the minimal margins are, are because um, everyone is the finest of the fine. So, uh, I mean, um, maybe we'll take another two, three years, but we will also uh, try and fill that gap and try to perform even better in the coming uh, Olympic Games and the other competitions. P.T. Ujia, when you look at some of the performance of India's athletes, whether it's in boxing or whether it's in uh, table tennis, archery, there were quite a few, oh my God, we came so close and just missed out by the barest of bare margins. So many of our athletes coming in at number four. Uh, how, how do you see that? How has this changed from your time? I mean, a, at your time, we had only one athlete who was of that caliber to be able to be in the finals of the track and field and actually come close to a medal. Now we've got many, but many seem to have missed out. Net, net, are you a tad disappointed with some of the sports like especially say an archery or some of the other contenders in shooting who probably didn't deliver the way you would have expected? How are you looking at the overall performance outside of this, Manu? Well, this, is, this is the Olympics one, you know, in, in, uh, the day is important so so the, the the they missed it very very narrowly for fourth is very important so when they when they lose with the uh, narrow and it will get uh, they should be mentally strong for the next olympics you know they, they can even that is important part fourth place that they can be a medalist the next time 
then it comes to next Olympics. So we should also give all the facilities for the players who comes in the finals and fourth position and all very, very important for us. So this time we have missed it like four, five, four, I think it's like that. So they should be strong with every time you cannot win and then the, losing the competition is, uh, they should make the mind strong and become, uh, then again, next year, it will be, they will be a winner also. So, Jashpal, Rana, from your lens, what are the lessons as a sporting nation, as a people, what do you think we should learn? And also for these athletes, earlier a lot of our athletes just went to participate. Only a few sports like shooting had real medal prospects. Now, in many more sports, our athletes seem to go in with the belief that they can win. And yet, somehow, just at that last moment, when it comes to landing the killer punch, whether it's that last uh, bow... Uh, that goes out, uh, last arrow that goes out of your bow, or that last shot, or even Lakshya Sen 2017 versus the Olympian, Olympics champion. That last killer punch, you know, how do we get that which would add substantially to our kitty of medals at the Olympics? To be really honest, uh, before I give you an answer, I have a question for everybody who's listening me here through your channel. How many Olympic, last Olympic uh, athletes are competing in this in this competition in this Olympics. Where are they? They must have come ninth, eighth, fourth. Are we are we protecting them? Are we supporting them in any way? Manu Baka could not have won this medal because of system. If Pityusha Madam was not there, she would, should have she should have been out. It was her effort that we have two medals and it's not that i'm i'm not saying that we, we are not talented we are talented this time also there are there are kids on fourth ninth seventh places is there any guarantee or is there any program where we keep these kids for another four years because next olympic they will have this fall this this disaster would happen in their life which will teach them a lot of things which taught manu a lot of things the tokyo olympic I, 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 are we keeping them protected? No. No, but can I counter so, to say, not to get into an argument with you, but can I counter to say that there's much more facility, financing, corporate backing, government support, athletes, physios, <coughs> the whole ecosystem seems to be far more proactive than it was, say, during P.T. Usha's time or even your time. There's much more support to these athletes than it was in the case. Very true. Very true. But if you think if that money matters, then why not Kuwait, Qatar, and all these UAE countries are number one in the world? Sure. The money does not do anything. We have to get bet. See, you, you have a best of facilities. You giving everything, everything is fine. I'm talking about protecting. Where is Saurav Chaudhary? Where is Jitu Rai? Simple question. Why, why are not they be they, they're part of this uh, Olympic journey? Why not Avina Bindra becomes uh, HPD or uh, for shooting? Why not uh, some athletic uh, person become the expert for the athletic? Let the federation be there. Let the government do the job. But there has to be some program where we protect them for long term. We're talking about 36 Olympics. Uh, uh, have you ever thought that if we conduct our Olympic uh, in 1936, uh, 1930, uh, are we going to win medal there? We have to work on medals, sir, first. No, when At you say protect them, Jaspal, why, what do you mean? Beyond the ecosystem that's being created, specifically, what are your suggestions to be able to produce more Manu Bhakar so we don't have people dropping out after gaining this experience? What specific protection are you talking about? She wants to give that answer. Answer that? Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, uh, so, firstly, I have had the experience of coming through the junior program, and I would say that junior programs did a fantastic job if not for all the sports then definitely for shooting it did because in long-term survival if you see experience does matter and i'm not saying that the selection policy or anything is wrong or um, anything but i'm just saying um, the selections can be conducted anyhow you want but just to protect the people who did great in the previous competitions in the previous olympic games just so in future we have uh, we train them for even better uh, opportunities and then they can also deliver because see if I see the shooters from China if I see the shooters from any other country they have a long-term program they protect their athletes they keep training them they have separate um, separate training bases for all the 
athletes that did well in one uh, point of time at one point of time but are not performing right now but they keep training them they keep helping them throughout their journey and they keep supporting them one girl who was on podium this time she she was the junior uh, shooter with me in 2017 and it's been so long i have not seen any indian athlete from 2017 till now that has been in the team so only the point is that to protect the people who have delivered for india in the biggest stages so that they can be groomed for even better opportunities and with the experience they can also deliver better performances